Today we will be talking about the first LEGO League Challenge innovation project and how your team can create and iterate your prototype. Hi, we're the Remote Makers. We are first Tech Challenge team from Pearland, Texas and an alumni first LEGO League Challenge team. We won the first place Regional Champions Award three years in a row. We won a runner-up Champions Award at the FLL Share and Learn Virtual Open Invitational. We also advanced to the Razorback Invitational, the World Festival, and the Greece Virtual Open International. We were also selected to be a Global Innovation Semi-Finalist last year. Throughout First LEGO League, teams will be using the engineering design process. Related to the innovation project, this involves identifying a problem related to the year's challenge, designing ideas for a solution, creating a solution model or drawing, iterating based on feedback, and communicating your solution clearly to the judges. We have another video that gives an overview of the entire innovation project. For this video, we are going to concentrate on the create and iterate sections of this design process by talking through an example of a previous project. We will not be fully describing our research, our problem selection, our initial solution brainstorming, or our project presentation planning. Please understand that those steps are still important for your team. We just wanted this video to focus on specific parts to be able to cover them in more detail. Also, remember that every team and project solution idea is different. Your team's engineering journey with your project solution will be unique and special in its own way. We want to take a moment to mention Mission 1 Innovation Project and the robot game. This small LEGO model that your team will build is only meant to be symbolic of your project and be moved across the robot game field to score points. Because the size of this model for the robot game is somewhat limited, it is often better to have a detailed drawing or other larger model as a representation for your project solution for when you share with other people or with your judges. Our project example is from the 2019-2020 to City Shaper season. That year, we were challenged to identify a problem and propose a solution for a building or public space in our community. As we go through this example from the past, remember that your team's own project must fit the current year's topic. When looking for our City Shaper problem, there were 10 incidents between vehicles and pedestrians or bicyclists in a two and a half school year period at our neighborhood intersections. Some kids in our area even need to cross up to nine major intersections on their way to school. We chose to focus on this problem because it was a really big and dangerous problem in our community. Legally, cars should yield to crossers at intersections, but pedestrians and bicyclists should check before entry as well. They can't just dart out in front of cars. Both need to check for safety. Our solution involves trying to change the behavior of both groups. As a part of our solution development, we needed to consider existing solutions to make sure that our solution would be innovative and solve the problem better than the existing solutions. We considered employing more crossing guards, but there are too many intersections to cover throughout our community with many schools. Also, crossing guards can only help during arrival and dismissal times. We thought about expanding school zones to cover greater distances. However, the neighborhood is too large to cover it all with school zones, and again, it would only be active during school arrival and dismissal times. We could add stoplights at intersections, but they are unnecessary for the amount of traffic and would require big infrastructure changes. We could also add speed bumps, but these would cause excessive wear and tear on vehicles if widely installed, and also slow down emergency vehicles from getting to their destinations. The biggest problem with these proposed existing solutions is that these only apply to drivers and not pedestrians and bicyclists. Both groups need to have safer behavior in order to prevent incidents. As we brainstormed potential solutions, we sketched our ideas. Detailed drawings can help explain your solution to others, whether they are professionals, judges, or even team members. Our team designed a four-part solution that can be implemented stepwise. The first part is marking the crosswalk. It is important for drivers to know that there is a crosswalk there and that people could be crossing. The second part is installing a warning sign for pedestrians to see and to remind the pedestrian or bicyclist themselves of approaching intersections. The third part would have warning lights on the sign to flash as the pedestrian or bicyclist nears the intersection if he or she is going too fast to warn them to slow down. This will prevent them from darting out too quickly into an intersection for a car to have time to stop. The fourth part is flashing in-roadway lights whenever a person is detected approaching the intersection to warn the cars to slow down and check for crossers to avoid a collision. Although we had a good detailed initial drawing, we wanted something that would be easier for other people to see and understand our proposed solution. 
We started our first solution model out of Lego pieces because that was what we were most comfortable using, but we could have used other materials such as cardboard or clay. Use whatever materials work for your team. We started with an in-general idea of what we wanted and then refined it as we went along. Our finished LEGO solution model helped us better visualize the solution ourselves and helped us better explain it to others. We used our model to clearly describe our solution. Once again, part one is to clearly mark the crosswalks on the ground with paint. Most crosswalks in our neighborhood are unmarked. Part two is to place pedestrian-sized signs on the sidewalk paths to warn pedestrians and bicyclists themselves of the intersections ahead. Part three is to install a radar system pointed at the sidewalk paths to calculate the speed of the oncoming people. If the speed of the person is too great, warning lights on the pedestrian-sized sign will light up to remind the pedestrian or bicyclist to slow down before entering the crosswalk. This will remind them of the intersection ahead so that they slow down to not dart out in front of cars. Part four is to install in-roadway lights in the crosswalk that will flash to warn cars when a person is detected moving towards the intersection by the same radar detector. We refined our handwritten flowchart by digitalizing it. This made it easier to read and understand when we shared our solution. We shared with the chief engineer at a traffic management infrastructure engineering company. He said he was very impressed with the thoroughness and the thoughtfulness of the solution. Very innovative. He also discussed with us how we could take our solution idea to the next level by testing its feasibility. To test our solution idea, we began to build a provable concept prototype. We designed it using an EV3 and an ultrasonic sensor because they were things we had available and knew how to use. A starting proof of concept prototype does not have to be anything fancy. Its sole purpose is to test aspects of your solution's functionality. Another thing to remember is that your prototype does not have to have all parts of your solution completely functional. For instance, we proposed solar panels to power our lights and radar. In our prototypes, we built a non-functioning symbolic solar panel to represent that part of the solution. As we tested our prototype, we found that the standard EV3 ultrasonic sensor could not measure speed as well as we needed it to. However, there are aftermarket companies, such as Mind Sensors, that sell products that will work with LEGO robotic systems. These aftermarket parts are not legal for the robot game, but they can be great for project prototypes. We ordered a high-precision time-of-flight distance sensor from Mind Sensors. Mind Sensors also has pre-made blocks for the special parts that can be imported into the EV3 Lab software. We could then calculate speed at higher precision and analyze the results with our EV3. We wanted our prototype to have a sign and in-roadway lights that would light up when specific speeds were detected so that we could better demonstrate our solution. We ordered another aftermarket part from Mind Sensors that allowed our EV3 to control the old LEGO power functions. This allowed our EV3 to control our power function's lights that we then installed in both our sign and the model of a roadway. We refined our prototype to look more like how our solution would. We constructed the miniature model of the pedestrian-sized sign using various LEGO parts and cardboard for the sign itself. We decorated a foam board to look like the model roadway and installed the power function's lights in both the sign and the roadway board. Like we mentioned earlier, Mind Sensors provided EV3 Lab programming blocks to use for both the distance sensor and the power function's transmitter. Using these blocks, it was relatively easy to program our prototype using the EV3 Lab software that we already knew. It took some hard work, but we created a working proof of concept prototype. The following is a video describing our solution using our proof of concept prototype. As the pedestrian or bicyclist approaches, the radar sensor near the intersection will detect the speed of the person on the sidewalk. As the sensor detects the person on the sidewalk moving towards the intersection, it triggers the in-roadway lights to flash on the crosswalk to further emphasize to vehicles that they need to double check for people in the crosswalk. Our system also encourages the pedestrian or bicyclist to slow down and visually check the intersection before entering. Regardless of the person's speed, the pedestrian-sized sign on the sidewalk path will warn pedestrians and bicyclists of the intersection ahead. If a jogger or bicyclist is approaching the intersection at too high a speed, the radar system will trigger flashing warning lights on the pedestrian-sized sign to bring their attention to the sign and encourage them to slow down. Now that we had a working project prototype, it was easier to share with other people. We returned to the traffic management infrastructure company and shared our new prototype. 
We shared with the radar company and an in-roadway light company, which helped us better understand the materials that could be used in actual implementation of our solution, as well as calculate a cost estimate. We also shared with city council members, a bicycle store, a bicycle club, our neighborhood, and students around the world. We got great feedback on our solution. In early December, we attended our qualifier tournament and were able to share our project work with the judges and other teams. We were so excited to win the first place champions award and a ticket to the regional championship. Even though we already had a functional prototype, we did not stop there. After our qualifier, we continued to work on improving our innovation projects. We bought a high precision Doppler radar sensor and a Raspberry Pi small computer in preparation to build a life-sized working prototype of the sign and radar. We began doing initial testing. One of the city council members with which we had previously shared our solution forwarded our idea to the city's traffic committee. We were so excited to be invited to present our idea at one of their committee meetings. The committee consisted of the city engineer, the traffic director, the traffic manager, the chief of police, the director of engineering and capital projects, and the director of public works. We had great feedback from them and they were interested in discussing further our solution with the traffic management infrastructure engineering company. It was such an awesome experience. Returning our attention back to building our full-size prototype, we needed to select materials, make measurements and cuts, paint, drill, and even learn how to solder wires. Our full-size prototype consisted of a sign that we designed, two lights, a Doppler radar sensor, and a small Raspberry Pi computer to control it. Programming the Raspberry Pi was slightly harder because we used the Python programming language, which most of us were not familiar with. Still, it was very doable for us kids and a great way to learn a new programming language. After we had our full-size prototype fully programmed, we had to test it. We tested running, walking, and biking toward it at different speeds. It was so exciting to see our prototype working. We brought all of our prototypes to our regional championship and incorporated them into our project presentation for judges. We won the first place champions award and the advancement ticket to the world festival. We were so excited about getting to share our work further with judges and teams around the world. Unfortunately, the world changed in the next week with COVID-19 affecting the United States. Schools closed and the World Festival was canceled. Still, in the middle of COVID-19 closures, a few months later, we were contacted by our city council about our project updates and work. We are still hopeful that when budgets resume to normal conditions, portions of our project may still be implemented. As we showed through this presentation, we continued working on our project throughout the season. We started with a drawing to represent our solution, moved to a LEGO model, then to a proof of concept LEGO prototype, and finally made a life-size working prototype. Along the way, we continued to share with more groups and make improvements based on their feedback. Every team and their time constraints will be different, but encourage your team to keep sharing and iterating the team's project idea. We hope that we've shared today how the Innovation Project is awesome. It is a great hands-on exploration of this year's topic and helps your team learn the engineering process in a fun and meaningful way. It offers a chance to make a difference with the team's design solution, but most importantly, it's fun. Thank you for watching and best of luck to your teams this season. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at themoatmakers.org contact.